Yo, 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 welcome to Crate 808. And today we have one of the top tier lyricists in the rap game with us, a student of Master Ace, Pastor Mace, and a killer bee with the Casper face, the bell ringer and shell slinger who hides body until the smell lingers. We dare you to pick a line he writes that's not as wicked as a sick piranha bite. Yes, it's the syllable sensei himself. We've got Elzai in the house. How are you doing, bro? What's up, bro? That's that was a that was a sick intro, man. Thank you, <laughs> mate. When someone with as many bars as yourself jumps on, I've got to try to use some of that, man. I've got to try to use some of that. So I appreciate you for being here, and uh, yeah, man. How, how how are you keeping, man? How are you doing? I'm great, man. I'm just over here, you know, just putting the plan together, making more music, and uh, trying to make sure that uh, I provide my friends with or my yeah, I like to call the people who listen to me uh, family or whatever. More, 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 more jewels, man. More, more music and more, uh, more things to listen to, pretty much. Damn, that sounds like fire to me, man. That sounds like fire. Uh, I'm going to dive in, but I've got to ask you what I ask everyone who comes on the pod first, bro. Elzai, what's the least hip hop thing you've done in the last 24 hours? <laughs> Uh, I ate a bagel, I guess. A bagel. Do you know what? I've heard that one before. I think bagels are the least hip hop type of sandwich thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. It's true. Okay. I like it, man. I like it. Nice little icebreaker. Um, L, man, this, this career of yours, bro, where do we start? I'm gonna, I want to start from the beginning with you because I'm a fan. Uh, I know our listeners are fans. I know this new album you've dropped seven times down, eight times up is doing the rounds on my timelines on the TLs. But before any of that, man, I need to just hear from you. Like, first of all, you're starting rhyming at the age of eight L. Is this true? Yes, that's true. Ha- at eight years old. How is that in your world? How are you even thinking? Do you know what? I want to write because at eight, I had none of that in my life. So I'd love to know how that happened for you, man. Uh, well, how it happened was, um, you know, uh, just on the block, like, like people were break dancing on my block. It was, it was people playing, uh, music out of speakers. I was around music, but what really took it there was when my, my cousin, who name was Chris Bud at the time, he was a, a, a rapper, also a street hustler. He pretty much, you know, made a mixtape and rapped over like the do what you like instrumental that, uh, from Digital Underground. So I heard that mixtape, I heard the music, and it sparked something inside of me. So the combination of him and Rakim and Slick Rick and Ice Cube is what made me want to be a rapper at the age of eight. Wow. Do you, do you even remember the first rhymes you were writing? Do you, do you still have them in your head? Man, uh, it only got, I only can remember like four bars. I, I say, uh, it's so wild, man. So you gotta, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But, but I, I was eight. So I said, uh, I said, I figure like a nigga pop the gun and hold the trigger. The gun is loaded. 12 gauge, I hold it. The bomb exploded. One sucker corroded. And I just won't stop till my lyrics pop, making sure that they weak and my opponents get dry. You know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, L, L, I'm sorry, right? You're there talking that down. If I heard that now, I'd be like, damn, that's solid. That is solid. <laughs> solid. Damn, eight what? years old. Going on like that. Hell, <laughs> man, this, that's crazy. That is crazy. Did you have a lot of music in your life then at that time? Like, what were you listening to? Paint that picture, man. Like, what, what was going on in your world, like, sounds-wise and stuff like that? Well, well, you know, since I was out here rapping like that at the age of eight, and, and my cousin used to uh, want me to rap for, like, her friends who would come over to the house. Mm. I think my grand, my, my great grandfather saw that in me. And when, when my birthday came around, he bought me a, a Walkman and a cassette tape. And the cassette tape was the Fat Boys, Fat Boys tape. So he pretty much, um, you know, he, he pretty much bought that for me. And I listened to that all the time. And I played that tape out so my tape popped or whatever. And, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, being in Motown, I mean, you know, Detroit, you're going to hear mad music, like from, from people's houses to my house, from Mike, from Michael Jackson to Diana Ross or whatever. So music was always around. Wait, when you were like rhyming then, you're a kid, you're rhyming, you've got music all around you. Do you remember that time when um, you spat something and you realized, wow, I'm actually quite good? I really don't, man. Cause I, cause you know. I was, you know, I think I was just trying to learn the ropes. Like, like, uh, when I would hear people like Rock Kim, it blew my mind because, you know, I, I, re- I remember like laying my head like on the, on the, on the, on my, uh, 
on my stereo at the time. So like the speakers was like the left and right speakers was right by my ears. And I would like play rock him and listen to him. And I would subconsciously notice how complex he was with his writing. And I would peep, I would peep out his patterns and the things that he would use, you know, like, uh, write a rhyme in graffiti, every show you see me in, deep concentration, cause I'm no comedian. It's like mm. graffiti in, see me in, comedian. And I'm, I'm like, well, I want to do that. So I, I want to do, wanted to do my own version of what he was doing. So I guess I was too wrapped up in that to like even know or, or to, or to even be hype about, uh, you know, like, like, like w- the last thing that I wrote, cause I was always trying to get better. Mm. W- were you battling at all or were you, was it just strictly in your bedroom writing raps? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, sure. I, I, I would write raps in my, in my room. I would, uh, I would go to school and like, I would, I would battle in the hallways and in the stalls or whatever. Like I'll be freestyling on the porches, you know, like I, I, I'm all over the place with it. That's crazy. And, and first MC name was it? Was it always L's Eye, or did you did something else land before that? It was uh, <laughs> it was M- MC was my first rap name, and MC meant Master Chilling. That's what it meant. Oh, cold. Oh, I like that Master Chilling. Okay, I like that. Man. That's sick. Word. How did you even land to L's Eye then? Because I, I know it's Hebrew, right? But I was how, how did that? How did how did you think that's the one? Uh, well, what happened was my name used to be LZ, you know, so when sometimes you may see me write LZ with a lowercase E and an uppercase L, uppercase Z, lowercase H and a lowercase I, because my, my name was LZ. Mm. And then I tried to spell it out like how I did LZ, but my first attempt was LZ. At the time I was, I was doing that around a brother named Thine in the hip hop shop. And he was like, yo, that sounds dope. You should keep that. I was like, yeah, maybe I should. But the thing was, I didn't know what it was. Like, I, I, I didn't know what an L's I was. So I tried to make an acronym out of it and couldn't do it. Oh. And then, le- and, and then later on, I would find out that in Hebrew, it meant God's spirit. That's deep, man. That's deep. Oh, that's sick. I need to talk to you about the hip hop shop later, man. Definitely. I need to hear more about that, that just scene. But just talking about this whole, like you growing up, started rhyming, you're doing all this, you, you're basically finding your kind of craft. There's a question I ask a lot of my guests who come on, because I'm just really interested to know in the life of, a, of an artist or an MC or a rapper, obviously other things are going on outside that life, like your family, right? So I always like to ask, did you ever talk to like your family about what you were going to do? But then it came to me with your Out of Focus album, right? Sick, mm. by the way, sick. Thank you, thank you. On there, there's there's a the, on that EP there is a actual interlude where there's a conversation. The conversation interlude is right there, which is a, a dad talking to a son about um, wanting to rap for a living. So I'd love to know: one, did you ever have that conversation with your loved ones? And two, how did that manifest in that interlude on Out of Focus? I mean, well, to be honest with you, like, you know, my, my, I, I came from an environment where one would say it was a uh, lower class or whatever. So my, my family, we don't really have like people on TV in my family or doing things in, in the entertainment business. So them being older than I, than I was and having the hardships that they had, you know, and the struggles, they just wanted to see me like work a nine to five, you know, and, and rise in the ranks of a job and try to save and, and live the normal life. But I was, I was a little different, man. Like I, I knew what I wanted to do. Like I knew what my passion was. So when I had conversations with them, it would get discouraging to be real with you because they would, they would want me to do that thing that they never got a chance to do or just because of the struggle. So they were kind of speaking out of like fear and, and just for looking out for me. But at the time I didn't really know that that's what that was. At the time, I, all I heard, you know, because my brain was still developing in, in, in ways, uh, all I heard at that time was they just didn't want me to do it because they didn't believe I could do it. Damn. And that might not have necessarily been the case. And, or maybe that was the case, but it was also another thing as far as like, you know, what, what I actually thought it was at the time. Yeah. So because of that, I kind of used that as my fuel to be like, to show everybody that I can get on. So it, that's how it, those skits manifested on uh, out of focus. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. Cause I'm sure there's so many people out there who I've come up from a different background than yourself, clearly, but there's are times when you want to push for something that's just not in the realm of your 
family's like kind of orbit, right? And and yeah, that kind of really hit home. And just listen to that, just EP generally, I was like, that was like 98, right? And then it got released in 2011? Yeah, it, it was it's crazy that you say that, man, because uh, I was in Detroit recently and I was there with my brother and we went to go see my mother's headstone. And, uh, yeah, you know, she, she left the earth in 1998 and I was just like, dang, that's just crazy. That same year is when I made out of focus, you know, and, and it was, and, and it was like the first me making that record, uh, was the first time that I had ever wrote about anything personal in my life. It was always just like rapping, you know, trying to either freestyle or just, you know, free, free flowing writing. But that was the record that uh, EP that I did was the first time I ever did something personal. I mean, big up for doing that because I feel like when you can try to translate pain into art if you know what i mean for for you know i can't really think of another way to describe it that to me just takes just some mental fortitude i don't think i really have and to be able to make that step it's just nothing but props for you man because listen to all your albums especially in the recent years in the last 10 years there's been a lot of that it's, it's a you're a very personable artist man i just have to tell you that because it resonates bro it, tr- it truly does resonate so i need you to know that before we move on because yeah man it's deep it's deep it really is thank you Hey, yo, 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 this your boy Farrell March, and right now you are rocking live with the Crate 808 Podcast. Enjoy this week's episode, and just remember to subscribe and rate and review. Peace. If we jump in now to your latest, your uh, new album, Seven Times Down, Eight Times Up, first of all, Fire, love that. It's what I've missed from you. <laughs> I have to say, uh, but it, it, let's start off with the first thing that came to mind when I heard that was uh, the title. Could could you break down that title for me? Yeah, yeah. Just you know, the seven times down means you know, like getting knocked down seven times, and then but but you up eight times, meaning you know, as long as you keep getting up, you know, you'll be fine. The the the, the thing is never just never to, never just give up and lay down. Pretty much. Did you have that in mind before you even started making any music or did that title come on later on? It was actually a title that um, <clears throat> that came up before I made music. I mean, it really it really represents my journey. You know, like if, if, if anybody follows like, you know, what I what I talk about in my albums, they would know that I've, I've had some ups and downs. You know, one thing that my man Speed told me, like as of recently, he was like, dog, you Dog, you a fighter, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you a fighter to be able to just continue to get up because some people don't, and then they leave the planet. But, but yeah, I just, I think, I think, I think it's just a representation of like my journey, pretty much. Mm, that's interesting, yeah, because it, it completely nails that. It's uh, what was it about? It's been about two years or two and a bit years since Jericho Jackson, which is again another dope project. W- were no you worries. working on this for those full two years, or were you like taking your time out and, or like, how did it come about? Well, you know what? Like, um, I, I work with, uh, this, uh, the producer, J.R. Swift. Oh, and fine. we, we did before I went to go to, to North Carolina to do the Jericho Jackson record, I recorded two songs for the seven times down, eight times up album. Oh. And, uh, and two of the songs was, uh, it was, um, early bird night owl and Ferndale. And, and so I went to go do the Jericho Jackson project. And then I went to go do something else that I can't speak on just yet. But then last year of November is when we really like put our heads down and like, decided to do a whole record and so we knocked the record out pretty much in a couple months damn i mean jr you've just talked about there i mean again sick he, he's obviously come up and there's been a lot of fire coming from him what was it about that his work that made you kind of think yeah i want to work with this guy but was there something out of that that came out for you yeah i mean it, it you know like i just felt like the music spoke for itself when he sent it it was like we were conversing and talking back and forth on uh, Instagram. And uh, I just asked him, you know, he sent me a beat and I thought it was dope. And I went to his page and heard some other dope beats. And so I was just like, yo, you know, uh, send me a pack and let me know what's good. And he sent me one and pretty much every beat in the pack was crazy. So I was like, OK, you know, maybe we can do a record together because he seemed like he was definitely versatile enough to do a record. 
That's crazy, man. So he just sent you the beat and you just like, listen, you must get like 101 beats a day. <laughs> like, that's mad, yeah. right? Man, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's like a gift and a curse because like not everybody got that talent, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, so you got to you gotta sift through like the good ones, but um, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely a blessing. Damn, man, that's sick. And when I think of Jarl Swift, I, I can't help but think of Griselda. And then it made me think of, um, I mean, I had to talk to you about this anyway. I had to ask you, Elza, right? How does it feel having one of the best verses of 2019? Because Eastern Conference All-Stars, bro, is absolutely outrageous. And you're with the Griselda <laughs> crew on there. When I heard that, I was like, I, I, I'm a big Griselda fan and I'm a big Sky Zoo fan. Everyone check out Retropolitan. Elza, like, you basically killed that, man. How, like, how does that feel, man? Do you get him any props for that? <laughs> Good looking, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, like people come to my page and, or, or may post something that follows me that, you know, may may have said that they thought my verse was killer. I thought everybody did their thing. And I, when I went on it, when I got on the track, it wasn't about like trying to out rap anybody. I just wanted to add what I bring to the table to the record. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten props for it and it's, it's, it's dope. It's cool. Yeah, man. I love how you're playing it humble, man. But I, I, no, it's nice. It's, it's a nice thing to hear because to me, it's like just so stellar and it's just when someone's like, yeah, I just went in there and did my thing. It just adds that extra layer of like just respect for me on that man. So I mean, the Griselda crew on there. How is how is your relationship with those guys coming up? Obviously, they've they've really come up in the last few years. But you've been on Supreme Blind Tao. Like you have like linked with them a few times. How's that relationship growing? Oh uh, man, it's cool. I mean, you know, like like you know, I, I was a fan of those dudes. Like I mean, I don't know. You know, it might be it might be some people that think that it was an overnight success for them. You know what I'm saying? But I've been a fan of those dudes you know, for like five, six years, you know, like, mm. you know, when they start putting out their stuff. So when, when I, when I peeped that they was online, you know, I, I, I reached out, they reached out to me and yeah, yeah. They, they some cool brothers, man. Yeah. Made it happen, man. And obviously they got Darringer, they got Alchemist. I don't know. Fa fa fancy, ju fancy jumping on one of their projects at some point. Like, would you ever do a collab? Would you ever do a collab project with those guys? So sure, I don't see why not. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely identify and can, you know, I shit, they, they, they kill that. They kill the rhymes and shit. Like they do their thing, you know? So why wouldn't I? That's true, man. That's true. Is it before I move on to the album again, is there any producer that you actually did think, do you know what? I'd love to just work with that producer. Is there anyone out there that you've genuinely got like an aim to work with? Uh, definitely. Like I, I would love to work with a uh, just blaze. You know what I'm saying? Like Sick. I think, I think Just Blaze is that deal. Yes, I can hear you all over that, man. <laughs> I can hear you all yeah. over that. Uh, but back to the album, though, man, because, again, and I don't want to be hyperbolic here, but I genuinely am feeling this like Jason. <laughs> right, Jason? Yeah, yeah. When you dropped that single, I was just like, holy, like, the way the beat kicks off, the drums, and I'm like, what the... F and then, then you brought this line where I was like, knock you on your cocky ass fast as a Kawasaki crash. And I was like, I'm using that all day. It, it, that, 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 <laughs> if I can use that diss to someone, I'll be loving that. So <laughs> the bars are incredible. What, what was behind that? And why did you drop that first? What was that? What was it about that track? Yeah, I mean, Jason is like, you know, for one, I put Jason at the end because Jason represents the eight times. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm up at that moment. So I wanted to end on a up note. Uh, Jason is my real name. And really, the song is really just about, you know, like a comeback or like, you know, like I'm back or I'm here. You know what I'm saying? But I wrote it in a way where I kind of like fuse the world of like Friday the 13th and, you know, my journey or whatever. Yeah. So that's what the bars is about. But like me putting it out first, I mean, it wasn't no nothing really scientific or like brainy about it. I just, um, you know, my manager just thought that. We should hit him with that first. So I was like, okay, cool, you know. Oh, it was a tactical move, man. Very much. <laughs> it was like a tactical strike. Because I was just like, I, I, I love New Elza anyway. So when you dropped that, it was like, yeah, obviously I'm going to give this a spin. And then bang, I still can't stop playing. It's it's sick, man. Uh, Thank you. banger. Great reference on the Friday the 13th. Who, who's doing that little voice at the at the beginning? Like, Jason? That Who is that? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> is that you? I thought it was. I was like, oh, I was going for it, man. Play some characters right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do something different, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> man, absolutely. Some Voorhees vibes. Love it. 
and then obviously you know that that is like the banger the upside the the album has like a, 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 a an amazing journey like the tapestry to it there's a lot of different vibes on it one of the real vibes that i got from it though obviously light one right one god that those are the kind of tracks maybe it's because it's 2020 but that's the stuff i kind of really want to hear and relating to someone like yourself through those tracks it's it's interesting man because just personally through lockdown through the virus through everything that's happened in 2020 a lot of my connection to my support network is very limited so i don't have like my boys chilling i don't have all my family around me all the time so when i hear stuff like god or uh, light one right one it impacts me on a, on a much more emotional level than it really would do bro and that 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 whole vibe i just want to ask how it's affecting you like in this year of change and protest like how's how are you dealing with 2020 how, how you, how's it all going for you I don't want to sound sympathetic to what's happening around the world because it's like, I mean, because I, I am sympathetic to everything to what's happening, like from the George Floyd situation to just, I mean, not even just the pandemic, like just the elections and everything. That's what I meant to say. I don't want to sound insensitive to people who are going through a hard time around this time, you know, because I understand how someone could because of everything thing that's happening and it could possibly like slow down just anyone who feels that way but like for me personally like I said I'm sympathetic to all the things that's happening for some reason it's just motivation for me to actually continue to work and actually put the, the word out you know what I'm saying like to, to, to put out a song like G.O.D. because I feel like I, I want to give somebody something to think about that they never have even if it's just uh, on a subconscious level and not really fully taking it consciously which i mean sh the subconscious level is even better because it's there but yeah it, it, it's just it's only it's only motivating me to do what i feel like i was called to do like what my purpose is and get and get the word out you know what i'm saying yeah absolutely is, is uh, the year and all the change and stuff that's happened, has it started any new conversations between you and your family and friends or anything? Are you guys talking about things differently? I mean, you know, like 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 we've spoke on things, man, but I, I think it's just it's, we want to see change. You know what I'm saying? We want to see change. We, You know, a lot of people want to see it. And, you know, we, we, we talk about how, how can we be a part of that change? Like, what can we do? Like, what can we contribute to this this moment in time? Yeah. You know, where, where everybody may be feeling a certain kind of way. And I feel like, you know, my purpose is to make music, you know, so that's what I want to do for the people. And, and hopefully it does, you know, spark some kind of change. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just thinking about that. I'm thinking, yeah, like hopefully it does spark a lot. I mean, just things in this album have sparked things for me. Just you're such a creative. Uh, writer like you do a lot of different concepts i mean jesus christ man the amount of concepts you've done generally in your career are crazy but there's even little lines when i was hearing him early birds night owl and i was up late just editing this podcast in, as you know being a creative endeavor with most things they start taking over your life but that track and just about how it is to grind you know those those bars hit home man when you were like i'm mm. tied to the greatest who grind to the crack of dawn that line alone got me through like a few hours of editing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, Word. this guy yeah. knows, knows the deal. Yo, what up, y'all? This is DJ Premier, and you're checking out the Crates 808 podcast. I put an S on it because there's more than one record in the crate, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we dig, that's how we play, and that's what real DJs do. You heard? That's why it goes down. We out here. Hey. Oh. One thing, another thing, I need to ask you: the artwork of it. Like, what, what is, what, what is it with the painting behind you? Like, why do you use that? What break that down for me? You know, the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, man, like, like, put it this way: I had a whole other concept for the cover, and oh. the, the artist that I, the, and the artist that I was working with. Uh, for whatever reason, he might have got busy or whatever, but he just kind of like vanished like Houdini. And so I was like, well, damn, we need a cover. Mm -hmm. And I remember like we had pictures that we took at a mastering party because we, we got the record mastered. And so we invited a lot of friends to the mastering party. And it was a, a, a guy who took photos and he took a photo of me in this studio mm -hmm. and that was one of the photos and we went through the photos and I liked the photo, but we, what, what happened was it was a painting in the background, but the painting was, was the way the photo was taken. It chopped the painting in half. So it, 
you couldn't see the whole entire uh, painting. Yeah. So and, and and the way that it was shot, it was shot with like a video camera. So the quality of the picture didn't look the way it does now. So we had to go in, change the quality of the picture and stretch the the painting Oh. To where the painting looks like you can see the whole painting, and yeah. and an artist by the an artist by the name of Chris Barr did that, where he recreated the painting to where it looked like a whole entire painting instead of being cut down the middle or cut in half, pretty much that. in the middle where you couldn't see it. So that's that <laughs> that's all that is, man. Man, L man, I, I, I don't even know if I want to put this out because now I'm like all these rap nerds who are like trying to read like Kubrickian things into this like oh but what's that painting and and what's that person in there and what's he doing with his face like you're just like yeah actually what happened was this <laughs> <laughs> exactly I'm, you gotta Sweet. put it out there man, yeah, you, know, man. you know i love that i love that uh but but again just going back to your creativity and, and at least there you're still thinking like of of how visually you want to put this thing out again the tracks on here like uh, hot cold uh, sorry hot winter cold summer that kind of stuff still harks back to me. And this is obviously a 90s pod, but you you have that spirit in you and you're definitely influenced by those kind of artists. That is what I love. Like beats, straight up bar fests, just something I could peel back on repeated listens. So I need to ask you, when you're writing things, what is the stuff you enjoy making the most? Is it is it concept tracks or deep tracks or or working with the producer and the beats or just straight up rhyming joints? Like what, where are you at? I mean, to be honest with you, I love it all. But if, but if I had to pick one, um, I just love putting words together, man. Like I love, I love, I love, I love being able to paint a picture with words or like, or to be able to say exactly how I want to say something, but in a way, in a technical way, writing it where it's all these patterns going on with like all these multi-syllable joints and, 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 and different rhyme inside of rhymes. But I'm saying something in a way that where a listener, if they didn't know what I was doing, would just look at it as a straightforward, like two bar. Like I'm saying something that they can really, they, they understand exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about, but they might not know the technical side of it that's happening. And some people got those eyes and some people don't, but I enjoy putting words together. So it doesn't matter if it's a concept song or a, a, a bar fest, like you, like you say, I just, I just love putting them together. That's that's wicked, man. Because again, throughout all of that, I mean, everything you've done from I remember like Lead Poison when I first heard Two Sixteens and that type of stuff, where I was like, I just uh, for all these years we've followed rap. It's amazing you can still tell stories in different ways, and it kind of elevates. It, there's there's normal concepts and there's like elevated concepts of storytelling, and I really feel like you fall into that. And um, I just wanted to ask you about storytellers generally, even if it's in hip hop or outside hip hop. Who were the storytellers that really influenced you and? Uh, and, ma and made you want to push yourself to do this kind of stuff. Oh man, I'm, that's a good question. Uh, I I would say Slick Rick is one great storyteller. Uh, Nas, great storyteller. Ice Cube, you know, if if you if you listen to uh you know the Death Certificate album, great storyteller. But then you got Quentin Tarantino, which is which is incredible. You got Shell Silverstein, you know what I'm saying? Like you got that kind of thing. Or you, or you have a, or you have Rockstar, you know what I'm saying? In the video game world, you know, with the, with the Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the Red Dead. Like, I mean, I love the stories that they tell. So it's like, those are like ones that I constantly go to. That's sick. That is really sick, especially the gaming aspect, because yeah, that storytelling is hitting each new levels. And I'm not as gaming as much as I used to do, but damn, when you just see it and you think, damn, this is like a, a book, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. crazy. Uh, but it's yeah. interesting. You do mention Tarantino there and we've talked about Jason Voorhees and Friday the 13th. I don't know if you want to drop this around Halloween, but this is turning into a really good Halloween album, bro. <laughs> because I was listening to, what was it? What was it the other, oh yeah, that was it. This morning I was on my walk. I was listening to Ferndale and I realized like Ferndale's sick. And then the way you end that and it becomes an intro to like the next few tracks, it's almost like horror films, bro. Like thugged out zombies and, and go, well, you know, Guns and Boats is a little bit different, but thugged out zombies. I was like, wow, this track is like, should be directed by Jordan Peele or some shit. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Good looking. It's a bit serious. Good looking. 
Bad for serious. Like, uh, how did how did you even start with that concept? Like a zombie film that starts off in a trap house. Like, how's that come to you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a big fan of like what Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino did. They did a movie called Grindhouse Double Feature. Mm-hmm. So that's where the whole the 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 pretty much the basis of the concept came from. And then it was all about like thinking about like what we wanted the the songs to sound like. So yeah, Guns and Bolts. Ah, we looked at it as like an 80s situation. You know, that's how it was presented at first. And then my friend Fest Rock did his thing on there. For me, I, I wanted to go that route. Like, you know, like Thugged Out Zombies was like, it just sounded so ridiculous to me. So I just wanted to create that world, you know, in that song. And it just delivered, mate. It really delivered. It's interesting <laughs> when, I, when I'm listening to, not just listening, but just watching things. I remember when February, when you dropped February, the video, I remember just thinking, this is like very Michel Gondry, real eternal sunshine on the spotless mind kind of vibes to it. Have you ever thought like of getting behind the camera or maybe writing a film or, or doing something like that? Have you ever thought to step aside from the hip hop thing and do something like that? Yeah, it, it, it's been it's been a thought that I've been tossing around for years, man. I, I think, uh, I mean, and every year I like write a little something or whatever, but um, it, it's, de- it's definitely a thought that I'm thinking about exploring in, in, in the future. Mm, I'd be interested to see that, man, definitely. Before I do, it'd be remiss of me as a massive Black Milk fan, as a massive Royce fan, First of all, as you're here to tell you, Deep, Deep is like an absolute all-time banger for me. The way you came in, there's a reason I used that for my intro, because the bell ringer with the shell slinger thing, oh man, sick. Thank you. For, for what, what, you and Black have worked together a lot. You've worked with Royce a lot. What happened to this super group, man? Is there, is there any op- opportunity for you and Royce and Milk to, to do something together? I mean, it's, it's, it's always, yeah, it's, I mean, it's always a possibility for us to do something. But what's crazy is the super group thing was fueled by, I think, people online wanting to see it happen. Mm. Like we, 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 we never really like put that out there like that. And, but at the same time, I'm not saying that we haven't talked about it either, but just we never put it out there online. And I think that became a thing where people uh, wanted to see it and, and more people saw that that's what people wanted to see. And they, I think a lot of people thought that we put that out there, but you know, it can happen. It's definitely a possibility, though. Yeah. Just the times you have collabed. I mean, the, all of your Pass is sick. Uh, fire. I'm, I'm building a little playlist, by the way, of your music. And just stuff like Fire, the Fire remix, Hands Up, What I Write. The, all these tracks. I don't know what it is, man, about this year. But because, again, I'm on my own, it feels like I'm regressing to my mid-20s. And I'm like, oh, I'm just playing like mid-20s Detroit rap, like loads. <laughs> and it's yeah, like, wow, this, is, this is weird. It's a, it's a weird vibe right dope. now. And, and I feel like I've kind of gone back there. When you look back at that decade, which was the noughties going into this decade, just, just here now, how do you look back on that? And how do you look back at your work coming up in that? Do, do you look at it with like uh, uh, admiration now or what? Yeah, you know, like when we, um, I can't front, when I was on tour with uh, Sky Zoo, Last year, we put out the Euro Pass again on the uh, streaming sites, mm-hmm. and uh, but this time it's on. It was on streaming sites. It wasn't on there before, but we put it on there. I was in the basement of the venue that we was performing at, you know. So I was just kind of downstairs by myself, and I just decided to listen to it. And uh, when I when listen back to Euro Pass, I was like, damn, this is a this is a, a, a nice little record, man. I mm. mean, like, you know, because, you know, as an artist, I mean, I can't speak for too many artists, but like, you know, like we try to we try to run to perfection. We try to run in a direction to get to perfection as much as possible. But nothing is truly perfect. But we always strive to try to go there. So when, when I'm making the music and I'm listening to it, it's like I dig it. But it's like sometimes in, in that moment, I'll hear the mistakes or I'll hear certain things that I wish I could change that other people don't hear. Because they, you know, I might have wanted to say something in a way where my voice inflicted a certain kind of way or like. Maybe I wanted to stop before the snare or, or on the snare or after the snare because, you know, I wrote it. I'll hear the things that I'm like, damn, I want to change that. But then like years later, I'll go back to it and won't even think like that. I'll just take it for what it was. And so, yeah, that's that's what happened with Europass. Yeah. Oh, right. Do, do you listen back to a lot of your own music then? Do you like, ever listen back to your albums a lot? Or Yeah, I mean, well... Every now and then I will just because, you know, I'm always into growth, so I always want to grow, but I don't want to forget what made people dig me in the first place. Like, what what was those things? 
And I always ask myself that question. It's like, okay, you know, so for the next project, I'll take in mind all the things that I want to take from the past that I used to do and mix that up with the new stuff that I do and create a whole create a whole new bag of magic with 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 those two things. Is there an idea of when you look back at this stellar career you've had is there certain projects that you feel really proud of that you think that yeah they really stand out to me yeah yeah i mean i'm, I'm you know it's crazy i'm proud of a lot of my pro you know that's dope that you asked me that man because I, I haven't really like said it out loud like that or looked at it that way but when i go back and i listen to you know uh, a euro pass or a, a, a preface or um sick you you know when I go back and I listen to a you know lead poison it's like damn I ain't mad at that you know what I'm saying you know but I, I'm I'm definitely proud of all the projects that I put out man I am yeah man no I, and so you should be man for sure. Hey, yo, what up, y'all? This is Prince Paul, and you're rocking with Crate 808 Podcast. Yo, it's EV Evidence, Dilated Peoples. You're rocking with the Crate 808 Podcast, my favorite shit. Let's go. Yo, what's good, y'all? This is Master Ace, Brooklyn, New York, Crooklyn Dodgers, all that. You're checking out the Crate 808 Podcast. Make sure you tune in. Yo, 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 yo. This is Stretch Armstrong. Ooh-wee! My name is Bobby Garcia, a.k.a. Cool Bob Love. You're now listening to Crate 808. Hey, it's Steve Rifkin from Loud Records. You're rocking with the Crate 808 podcast. Spread the word. These guys are dope. The questions they ask in the interview is amazing. Yo, Mayhem Levin in the building. Crate's 808 podcast. Yo, this is Rodney P, the rhythm killer. Big blood clot things were in there. You heard me? Yeah. And we're here listening to the Crate 808 podcast. Big things is going in right back to the early morning. If you don't know, get to blood clot. No, you feel me? Crate looking at when you first stepped into the game when you came and debuted that's probably the first time I think I ever really heard you and, and I don't even remember hearing you the first time it was on repeated times on Welcome to Detroit you and Dilla on that just incredible and that that as a debut for you was just must have been um, must have been a pretty huge impact for you I mean how did that come about when you were on uh, Come and Get It um, well what happened was at that time uh, you know um, I was working with Wajid who's a uh, who does music? He, he's he's great. Um, he was cool with Dilla and 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 T three, and we was making music together. And T three, I guess, was looking to manage somebody, so we had a meeting, and then T three became my manager. And then uh, I look up and T three like, "Yo, Dilla wants you to get on this joint called Welcome to Detroit." So you know, I'm like, "Oh hell yeah." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because in, in the city of Detroit, before anybody knew about Slum, we knew about Slum. We knew about Dilla. So it was like, you know, Dilla was a legend before he even made the uh, the, the drop record for, you know, uh, Lab Cabin, California, uh, Farside. He was a legend. So, of course, I would do it. And so it's crazy. Is Dilla like sent like just bare drums, like just a drum line. What? So what I do, so what I did was just I just rapped to the drum line those verses, sent it back to Dilla, and then Dilla just created a whole beat around it. That is mad. Okay, first of all, props for you to do that. That's that's pretty different, man. Could you like tell us a bit about that relationship? How it is working with someone like that? What was it about him that you'd maybe seen? that no one else do or is is there something about him where he just really sticks out to you yeah i mean dilla like you know he was a threat like he was dope on the mic dope on the beats like he could cut he could dance you know what i'm saying yeah i've been in the studio with dilla where dilla i've seen him make a beat from scratch and it was like five minutes something something he making five minutes last a, a lifetime or, or eternity you know what i'm saying like mm. It was like, I, you know, I watched him like I saw him like make a beat and then look up in the air and then go through his like always like almost like he looked up in the air and was thinking. Then he like went through like his uh, folder of, of, of albums and grabbed one and put the album on the reel and dropped the needle on the exact spot where he wanted to sample. And it was just like it was almost kind of like he 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 formatted it, the whole thing in his head before he actually like got to work to do it. And it was like it took five minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, and I've been I've been in, you know, I've been in the presence of incredible producers, you know, what I'm saying that's dope in their own right. But I never seen nothing like that before. 
I mean, that's that sounds like a level of genius that is just inexplainable. As as we are talking, like you said there about Detroit, knowing he was a legend before he'd even started dropping his biggest hits. Please paint the picture for me and the listeners right now about the Rhythm Kitchen, man. Like what that was like, like almost like the birth of Detroit hip hop. Well, I don't know if it was it or not, but you tell me. You know, it was crazy. That was before my time. You know, like mm-hmm. but before, but you know, so I can't really tell it to you like I was there. I just. It was just things that I heard, you know, from people like Proof and, and, and DJ Dez. You know, it was like a uh, a Chinese restaurant, you know, or an Asian restaurant of some sort where they would put stuff to the side and, and have an open mic at the restaurant. That's mad. And that's, uh, yeah, I wasn't there to see that, but but that's what they told me. That is mad. But then it evolved, right? It got to the hip hop shop that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, it, it evolved into the hip hop shop, which was... Uh, a clothing store from Maurice Malone. And so I really don't know the history behind Maurice. I, you know what? I think Maurice, boom, there you have it. Maurice was at the Rhythm Kitchen and that's how they brought that to his shop. And so, yeah, he, they brought they brought the open mic to his shop because he saw what was going on in the Rhythm Kitchen. And the hip hop shop uh, would become an open mic from four to six on Saturday. And, and proof would host this, this open mic from four to six. Big proof. And, and, and the first time I walked up in the hip hop shop, when I opened up, the, when I cracked open the door and I heard the music from the other side get louder from me cracking open the door, I saw Obi Trice on the mic in fatigues spitting on a microphone before he became the platinum artist he would be, he would Damn, become in the future. That's crazy. Yeah. That is just a beautiful thing to hear stuff like that, man. Because we get that stuff years down the line. And to know that someone's been there, seen the kind of growth of an artist like that, like all of you guys, you know, and, you know, RIP Della, RIP Proof, and it'd be amazing if they were still here, but their their legacy definitely is. Again, it was in the mid noughties where I really realised Detroit rap was something I loved. It's funny because you will find those geeks, you know, in, in the hip hop gigs. Uh, you will find the Black Milk fan. If you're wearing the T, they'll be like, oh, snap, Slum Village. Yeah, 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 man. So yeah, it has <laughs> well, always like a little thing here as well. But um, I need to move it on though. And uh, uh, do, there's so much work, but I do really want to talk about Jericho Jackson with you, bro. Not even just for the music, but for the for the feeling I got from it when I first heard it, because everyone has their dark times, everyone has their ways of processing, and I had my ways of getting through that. And I landed a lot on meditation, breathing, processing, and Alan Watts. And when I heard you kick off the whole album with Alan Watts, <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, what? And and then Conway did it this year as well. Like, is there something in his his teachings and meditation that have really helped you and helped your creativity as you've and I know you've talked about it before, but just generally? Well, you know what, I, I can't I can't take the credit for uh, putting him at the beginning or on that record. Like it was really Christ's idea. It okay. was Christ's idea, like it was his idea to uh you know, speak, have a voice, you know, on a record as well. You know what I'm saying? Through through the skits and through uh through making a beat. So I can't even take the credit for him, but I do agree with, with uh, a lot of the things that he says. Is meditation's part of your life? Are, are you like still doing it nowadays? And how how do you basically manage your ego kind of thing through life? Uh, I mean, you know, I got a relationship with God. You know, like I. You know, even with my gift, like I don't really take credit for the things that I do. I know I play a part in in what I do, but I don't take the credit. I give him all the credit, but I know he gave me the gift and he he made me the instrument and the tool and the vessel to, to carry out that gift. So that's really that's really what keeps me grounded and keeps me moving through life the way I do. I love that. Is there um actually actually before we move on, Jer- Jericho Jackson? On there, I remember when I heard the healing, and again, big up crisis, man, absolutely sick all the way through that. And when I heard the healing, there was a lot of Radiohead in that feeling. It feels like a real Radiohead track with you rhyming over it. And then it made me think of something I read that you love Tom York, or you at least admire Tom York's music, right? Yes, I do. Okay. So this Radiohead love, this Tom York love, tell me about that. Like, What, what do you find in that music that you couldn't really find in rap or, or maybe any other genre? Well, let me, I, I'll say this. I mean, you know, for one, Radiohead is a phenomenal group. I mean, in the way that they approach music. The sounds, you know, the, the way music transforms, like they, they are amazing. Like to me, you know, the transitions is incredible. The lyrics is incredible. Like the artwork, it's like the, the, the imagery 
But all of that is incredible. All that is great. But one thing about me is I'm, I have synesthesia. And I don't know if people know what that is, but it's a, it's a thing where I'm able to listen to music and see colors at the same time. Right. And when I listen to Radiohead, just b- like a burst of colors, like just, it's almost like, I can't even imagine it. It's like so like electronic and, and, and what I see, I just see nothing but blues and yellows and flashes of reds and it's just amazing. So I'm, I, I listen to the music and I, I'm a part of the music in a way where not too many people are, you know, because of what I have. So Radiohead really excites me in, in, in ways where it makes me want to write, you know, it makes me feel creative. That's so good to hear. Is there, um, an album or project that really sticks out to you from those guys? Yeah, yeah my favorite is Kid A. You know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Kid A and uh, Insomnia, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you, I feel you. It's weird because a lot of rap heads I know really, really like In Rainbows. That album really affects them. I think musically, like you say, I think there's something in that. Actually, I was listening to Tom York's track on the Suspiria film, you know, the remake that they did. I don't know if you've heard mm. that track, but... I don't think I have. Man, if you can sample that, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Because <laughs> I was okay, like, I'm going to check it out. Mate, I was listening to that track and I was like, imagine that beat with just bars on top. It would be sick. Either way, sorry, I digress. I digress. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, <man. laughs> Yes, yes, you are rocking with the best. This is the one and only Just Blaze. Right now, you're checking out the Crate 808 podcast. Remember to hit up Crate808.com, like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. Peace. Crate I, I, I am going to move on to some 90s questions and just have your idea of what you feel about the 90s and, and uh, you know, the love of that era. In the 90s, if you could have been a fly on the wall, any 90s studio session, which one and why would you have gone for? Mm, man, that's a great question, man. <laughs> Dang. Hold on, hold on. Cause it's like it's like you're asking me to pick one session, <laughs> man. Like, and then wait a minute, when you say one session, are you talking about a, 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 a song like in a session or like a, just the group period? Like, Ooh, what are you saying? Good, good. Yeah, good, good wrinkle. I would go with uh, the group let's let's let, let's branch it out yeah group sessions like are we talking about the session for a particular album or just for a song yeah for, for, okay, an, album, okay. for an album okay yeah. for okay 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 um ah, so many ways to go <laughs> but, but 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 i'm gonna say i'm gonna say souls of mischief uh 93 to infinity <sighs> That is, I tell you this right now, Al. That's going to go down really well with our with our listeners. <laughs> that, oh yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, man, that, like, there are so many people who love that group, and rightly so. That album, I mean, just the way they were rhyming. Like, let's not even talk about the beats, but just the how do you, how do you do that as a group? That's just interesting to me. Again, you know, like when you're in a session with more than one person, how do you create? And and yeah, man, it just feels amazing. That's a wicked answer. I love that. If you think there's one nineties act hip hop could really do with right now is there one or do you think we're good just as we are uh 190s act um i mean do they do they gotta still be on the earth or, or you know oh yeah yeah actually no dead or alive actually let's do that uh, i say biggie you know what i'm saying like uh, just imagine just <laughs> yeah i say biggie man you know see I, I love it i love i love to hear i would love to hear some new biggie right now yeah but as, as, as a lyricist like yourself who admire something like that tell me i mean tell me to to to, to you're not gonna answer if you don't want to but does biggie get in your five do you have a top five would biggie be in there i mean the top fives always flip and bounce and, and somersault and all that but for sure um yeah biggie is definitely in there I was I, I you know I don't I don't know what number he would be right now, but he's definitely in there. Mm. Have you ever have you got any stone cold like definites in there? I've got like three in mine where I'm like, yeah, they're never going to really move. Have you got any? And I can't. Nah, I don't. <laughs> that, I, that, big, 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 biggie, 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 Biggie is definitely like he, he's he's the only one that stays in there. Yeah, fair, but fair, fair, fair. That's all good. If there's something from the '90s you think you don't miss. Is there something in that where you think I'm glad we've kind of moved on from that? Ex- yes, I do. It's, it's uh, the the East Coast West Coast beef. I'm glad that we moved away from that because it was so. It was it was definitely uh, foolish 
And it was really just like fueled by like, uh, you know, publications, like magazine publications to like sell copies of, of, of magazines. And then it just became this big thing. Mm. Like people just kind of bought into it. It was just senseless. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad we over that. Yeah, man, definitely. If we're looking at your career, though, Al, it spanned so many decades. Had there been any certain highlights where you will always look back and be like, wow, man, that's just what I can't believe I did that. Are there any there for you? Yeah, yeah it's a couple. Uh, it's definitely a couple. Like uh, when I was in the studio with uh, Kanye West and, oh. and, 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 and like and watching him in the studio. I mean, we talking about, you know, Kanye West. I mean, to get in the studio with Kanye West for uh, for any artist, whether they want to lie to themselves or not. Like, I mean, it's just because of what he laid before he got to where he at right now. It's like, you know, you're going to respect like the his creativity and his genius level. So it's going to be a great thing. But when I went in the studio with him, it was around the time that he was Kanye West, but he hadn't been like, you know, Kanye West, like the stronger, faster Kanye West or the uh, dark twisted fantasy, all that. We, we, we call him like when, when he was doing his second record. So to see that, so, so to see that guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who's, who's like, you know, climbing to a, a, a specific place in his career to, to be in a studio with that energy. Cause he had a lot of work on the table. Um, to, to see him so enthusiastic about the song. Cause I had a line in the song where I was like, uh, uh, the selfish song where I was like, uh, I wish I could hug you all at the same time. And, yeah. and Kanye got to like moving around or whatever, and, like ho- hugging his own self and twisting his body around <laughs> and just saying that, you know, it's just like to see him act out like that. It's just like, yeah. OK, you know, that's 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 what's up, you know, so it's, it's something I'm gonna always remember. No. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Like again, like you said, you know, we see one side of them over here as fans, but to be in that studio and to see them love it that much, man, that really adds to it for me. So I appreciate you you telling us stuff like that on these highlights we're talking about. I know you you you've toured the world, and is there anywhere you really wanted to tour or like cities you may want to visit? Man, I mean, like you know, I I can't lie, man. I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm a kid from Detroit, and and before I actually like you know, went on tour. I mean, sh- I, it wasn't really a place, you know, cause I, we, I was just from the D, you know, so that's, mm. that's all I knew was Detroit. But as I went to different places, I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Like just to see all the different cultures and, and, and the different, uh, style of buildings and houses and the, the different, um, accents or whatnot or like was amazing. But like, I would say before I, I would say before I went, the one place I did want to go was Africa. You know, oh, like a, a Joe Johannesburg or something, and I got there, and being there was incredible. Like it, it, it was amazing. I mean, it, it kind of felt like home to me. You know, when I went there, like when I, when my foot touched the soil, it's like an energy like went from my foot and crept up my calf, and and just kind of it, if it, it, it felt great, and That's um. Amazing. And, and so, yeah, you know, we, you know, we ate some good food, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the food was incredible. Like they took care of us. They picked us up and like escalades and, Damn. you know, they made sure, they made sure that the, 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 you know, we was, we was smoking on something good. They took <laughs> us around. Mm. Uh, it was, it was amazing. And it was, and it, and it was definitely the first time that we, we got robbed. Oh, but, snap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's how you going on, man. Jeez. Um, I mean, I mean, uh, we, it, it, our rooms was in the, uh, you know, our, our coats was in the back room and uh, and my coat was my Burberry glasses and T3's coat was his iPhone. And then we had mad food and we had like, you know, we just had everything that we were going to eat once we got off the stage. And while we were on stage, people went into the room, they ate the food, oh. they, 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 you know, they, you know, they, they drunk some of the leaders of pop that was there and like, they took T3 iPhone and they took my Burberry glasses. And so when we walk into the room, we just kind of not really focused on anything, but like slowly we started noticing the little changes of like, mm. you know, the, 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 the food being tampered with, how low the uh, pop was. Yeah, like, yeah. 
because somebody drunk it. And I'm like, oh, shit, did they take our stuff? Because <laughs> the coast was still there. Oh, no. And yeah, they took our stuff. But other than that, it was a great, fantastic time, man. <laughs> and, 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 and I loved it. That's amazing. But hold on. Were they prescription glasses or sunglasses? These were these were, uh, these were were uh, Burberry glasses that I bought and I put prescription lenses in there. Did you have a spare pair of glasses, L, for this talk? <laughs> I did not. So like the oh. rest of the... So the rest of the tour over over there, I had I didn't have my glasses, and T three didn't have his phone. So you know, oh man, as a person who wears glasses and without them, I'm lost. Fair play to you for going on tour with no glasses. That's amazing. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's mad. Do you live your life where you have a bit of a bucket list of things you want to do, or not really musically, or even generally, or do you just kind of? go as it goes uh I, you know i think uh, as of last year i i created a bucket list of things that i want to do mm-hmm. like you know music musical thing like things in in the entertainment business that i enjoy i want to i kind of want to take a stab at it myself so could you share any of those with us or you want to keep them on the dl uh man, I, i'll maybe keep them on the dl but one thing i will share is uh just more music man you know what i'm saying supplying supplying the the world with more music i definitely want to do that wicked man again your music what's the verse or song that everyone kind of really want to talk to you about is there is there one is there a project that people really want to approach you about i mean people it's it, you know like it's what's crazy it's like elmatic the preface and like lead poison is is three projects that people always like approach me and tell me like oh man this got me through this or this helped me out through this and oh, i appreciate this so yeah i would say those three Okay. There was a big, big uh, hiatus between uh, Elmatic and Lead Poison, right? That was, yeah, there was a big thing and you, those kind of things that have affected you in that, that time. Is that, is that something you look back on and you kind of feel like I really turned a corner there and like, it's really led to your creativity being, is is it better now from it? You know, it's crazy. Like, you know, like when I was going through what I was going through, I couldn't write, you know, I could, like I couldn't write anything. So through those years, I was not able to write. And when I did write something, it just, didn't work for me it was only until I started to like write the things in my mind that was cluttering my mind like writing them down to get them out of my head was when I was able to think clear and get back on track because the very things that was cluttered in my head is the very things that I put on lead poison and so that just cleared the space in my head to be able to write from that point on and so I you know the lessons that I learned to you know, life lessons through my relationship with God and like just things that I learned, you know, as far as like navigating through the industry as well as like my artistry at that time, being in that place definitely helped me, you know what I'm saying? As a, as an artist and be, and becoming better as an artist. So uh, one thing's for sure, like I said, my man Nick called me a fighter. So I think that allowed me to see how much fight I had in me, you know? So, mm-hmm. and not only that, man, if that didn't happen to me, like that stuff, like, I don't know where I would be right now, man. Cause I was kind of reckless when I was younger. Like, you know, I would just, I would just say, I would just say like, I would just be like, fuck it. And, well, can I cuss? I don't know if I can cuss. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I, <laughs> but I'll just, I'll just be like, man, you know, I, because it was all about just competing with me, like in the, in, in, in my earlier career, it was all about competing. Like, it was like, whatever. I just want to, I just want to grab the crown, tilt it on my head and, and, and stand with my arms floated. Like, but going through what I went through allowed me to see that once I put my pain out there, people talk, talk to me about their pain. I'm like, oh man, it, it, the world is hurting right now. I need to, it need to be more than just competing because I can do that all day as well. But I want to, I actually want to, put something out there to, to maybe see if I could start the process of healing or become a gateway to what that is, or just even spark the thought or like spark the thing that make them think of or see something that could uh, put healing in motion. So going forward, all the albums I do is going to have something in there that's going to make people question certain things or maybe, or maybe pop a thought in somebody's head that never even thought to like think about the thing that I put out there that could actually help them out. So, you know, man, that's deep. That shows proper growth. L. People do change. Obviously you keep like, you know, the core of yourself, but it's like we said earlier, it's about being the best version of yourself. Right. And I sometimes feel like uh, stories like you just said, there is fine in that. It's that journey, right? In, in there, you did talk about it in, in the album, in Lead Poison, but how's your relationship with weed 
right now, man. Like, are you still smoking? I know you you said you smoked before, and obviously there's weedopedia and stuff like that in your in your bars and that. But do you still smoke? Man, like, like, can you hear that? That's a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. He's not on the <laughs> base. He's not doing any of that. He's, he's still on the flower. I love that. Can you hear that? I have the lighter right there, man. You know, I was smoking before you called. Me, oh, man. So, snap. You know, that, yeah. that's cool man are you managing that relationship quite cool is, is it helping you um, generally in life and being creative and shit definitely definitely it is man I mean you know my, my I have a vivid imagination so Mm-mm-mm. yeah it's it's definitely something that uh you know I, I use as a tool as far as like you know just just listening and comprehending and, 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 and really trying to get the most out of whatever art it is you know yeah for sure man for sure L man that's sick this conversation has been sick I wish I could have done more of it with you, man. Uh, but like, so, was, so L, thank you for blessing us. I really appreciate you taking your time out, jumping on here. Whilst you're sparking that little zoot up, I need to ask you, <laughs> uh, L, before you leave us, what's the last great piece of music you heard? Could be old, could be new, could be your own stuff, whatever it is, the last thing you heard where you're like, that is great. Mm-hmm. Man, that's another one of them questions, but I, I'm, I'm going to say, um, uh, Evelyn Champagne King, Love Comes Down. Like, oh. man, that that shit right there, man, I could throw that on. Nice. And 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 and, and the room would change, like the airship, you know, to be a, it's it's gonna change things. That it's, it's a powerful song. Yeah, man. I love that. What a way to end it on that bombshell. Love that. L's eye, man. Thank you for your time. You know, always remember that the fans out here, that stuff resonates. We're the kind of people that are analyzing your artwork for no reason. Just remember that's, that's, <laughs> you're always catering to us geeks, man. So, um, was, but yeah, man, uh, hopefully we catch you soon. And you know what? Next time you drop an album, feel free, come back on. We'd love to just chop it up with you again, man, for sure. Definitely. I, I definitely will. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you, man. Peace. Peace. Hey, yo, this is the one and only R.A., the rugged man, and I'm rocking with the Crate 808 podcast with my man Cam. Yeah. Well, 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 there you go. The one and only Elzai blessing us all. Crate 808 podcast bringing it for you. What a conversation. I have been begging to get Elzai on for a long time. It's just Brilliant that he dropped a new project we could talk about with him at the same time. And yes, hope you guys enjoyed it. Just leaves me with a bit of housework to do. Go out there. Please subscribe on YouTube. Like this video on YouTube. Go check out the merch on crate808.com. Check out all the mailbag stuff we always ask for. Uh, What's the weirdest dream you had of a rapper? (laughs) I want to hear more from people. Thank you for those ones that have already come through. Where's the weirdest place you've met a rapper? What are the craziest lyrics you've ever heard? Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. We love it. And also, just to go into before what we had in the other episodes, what really is the worst beat of 1995? Uh, We've had a lot of people talking about um, Cool G Rap and Naz's Fast Life, but I'm not having that, man. That's not that bad. But then, uh, okay, yeah. Yes, I'm sure I'm sure there are people out there who 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 disagree with me. So yes, hit us up on our socials or email at crate808 at gmail.com. And uh, yes, and we will try to feature you on the show and shout you out. And of course, go to crate808.com to get the newsletter, man. Give you a heads up on what's going on with us. Also, you know, what tracks we're liking, what stuff we're liking to read online, and just general crate 808 flavor. So yes, go subscribe to that as well. Big up Grindhouse Music for making all the beats for us on this, which is sick. Go check him out if you need some done for yourself. And yes, other than that, man, keep it locked. We're going to keep bringing you the dope shit. And yeah, go bump some L's eye, light up a zoot, wash your hands and get on with it. (laughs) Right. Catch you on the flip side. Peace. Peace.